All right, so we have the ability to make a wave. I'm just gonna define a wave so we can see it in the window and know what it looks like. Now we're gonna look at what these things do. In particular, we're gonna look at the volume envelope and the volume LFO. So env LFO is short for envelopes and low frequency oscillators. This tab also happens to have the filter on it, which is neither an envelope nor a low frequency oscillator. It's a badly named tab. All right, we have three different kinds of envelopes, volume envelope, cutoff envelope, resonance envelope, and those are separate settings. Like if I mash these buttons, you can see the different envelopes are stored separately. Uh, cutoff and resonance envelopes affect the filter, which I'm not using yet. The volume envelope is the most important envelope. Right now it's turned off. I can click here to turn it on, or I can use this to make it partially on. With an envelope, there's not a lot of reason to have it partially on, in my opinion. The envelope has six knobs, and you see this curve. Its shape is being defined by the six knobs. You have the pre-delay, which is a point where the volume is zero up to a certain time. Attack, the amount of time it takes to go from the start to when it's full volume. Hold, a certain amount of time the volume stays at peak. Decay, slope of the line going down after the peak. Sustain, on this envelope graph, the sustain is just a dot, but really the sustain is the volume it stays when you hold the button down. And release, the slope after the sustain. If I turn this envelope on and press a key, So if I set the attack to a high number, it'll be a slow ramp up. If I set the attack to a low number, it'll be a fast ramp up. If I set the hold time to zero, then it'll start decaying as soon as it's done ramping. If I set the hold time to a larger number, it'll hold for a while before it decays. If I set the decay slope to be long, it'll decay slowly. Short decay, it'll decay quickly. Set the sustain high, the decay won't matter that much because it'll be holding near its peak volume anyway as I hold the key. Sustain low, it'll decay a lot before holding. And release time, if I set the release time long, then it'll just kind of ring out even after I've let go of the key. One thing, you usually want the release slope to be at least as steep as the decay slope, because otherwise letting you know, the key earlier could actually make the note longer, which is bad. So release should usually be steeper than decay. So with this envelope turned on, you can make your instrument sound a lot more interesting than just a constant buzz while you hold the thing. Envelope off. Envelope on. It's still obviously a synthesized electronic sound, but it's a more naturalistic synthesized electronic sound. LFO Low frequency oscillator is another thing that can affect stuff. With your envelope, all your volume can do is go from low to high to low again. It's just one curve. LFO is a repeating thing. We can turn that on, off. We can also turn it partially on. In LFO's case, that's useful. Let's turn it all the way on. Turn the speed to make it really fast and hold the key. Let's have less of that. How about even less of it and slower? So as you see, that gives us a sort of tremolo effect where the volume varies over time in a nice way. That sounds, again, still synthetic, but more naturalistic than if we weren't doing that. And the LFO itself can have an attack, so it's ramping up to having more LFO.
If I make that faster, it's more obvious what it does. So as you hear, it does the ringy tremolo thing later, but it doesn't do it right away. And pre-delay is similar, except it's a hard cutoff. So there you heard no LFO and then heavy LFO right away. Attack is probably more natural, but you might use them together too. The shape of the LFO wave itself matters. If you make it a square wave, you get a much sharper change. Saw wave can be interesting. And triangle and sign sound pretty similar. You can also set the LFO to behave randomly with this button. I'm not sure why you would want to do that exactly, but if you make it really fast, it can sound kind of interesting. In general, I try to avoid random things because when I'm doing a random thing and then I export it to a file, it's going to re-roll the randomizer every time I listen or export, so I can't be sure the version I heard is the version I'm exporting. But sometimes, if you're just randomizing enough stuff, it'll average out to be okay. Like, white noise generators are based around randomness, and they sound okay. Uh, this button here just changes the scale of what the speed knob means. This button here changes the way that the LFO and envelope interact. It's subtle, and I'm not going to go into it. I don't use it myself. And another nice thing you can do with the LFO has to do with your song tempo. Song tempo is this button right, right here, by the way. You can left-click it and drag, or you can double-click it to set your tempo. And you can link the LFO speed to the tempo. If you right-click, tempo, sync, quarter note. So now this LFO wave matches the quarter note of my tempo. And if I set the song tempo faster... So if you want an effect that stays in sync with the song, you can do that. And you can go as far as singing it to a 30-second note. So you have that trilly noise. We can make that more amount. Get rid of the free delay. This is all still using this wave that's coming out of the plug-in tab. But it's using it in a more interesting, complicated way. Of course, we can go back to the plugin tab and change the wave too. So, by applying the volume envelope and the LFO to the volume, we can get quite a few different approaches to that same waveform, making it more percussive, more gradual, having more of a sci-fi trill to it, etc. There are, of course, many other things you can do. There's the filter, there's functions, there's FX. And I will be getting into those in a future video. But to start with, you can use Bit Invader and the volume envelope and the volume LFO, and those alone will give you quite a few possible sounds to work with. soon with another video where I go into some more options on this thing. Bye for now.